He's literally tearing them up to a high altitude. These tests are done at about 35,000 feet. Now, what was that? Well, that's a rapid decompression. The man is uh, ostensibly at an altitude of, say, 10,000 feet. The chamber next to him is at 35,000. The membrane between is suddenly ruptured, and the man precipitate into an uh, atmosphere of an, a decreased density. Well, this was an interesting instrument. Just what is this now? This is well, a that's a human centrifuge in which we uh, tend to produce the effects of extreme acceleration or high, uh, multiply the effect of gravity many, many times. This man is signaling on a stick to simulate firing of his machine guns to show that he's still conscious. He's, he never becomes aware of the fact that he is unconscious. He believes that he continued to push that button. Although, if you watch closely, you'll see that he uh, loses consciousness. Uh -huh. Now, this loss of consciousness is due to the blood flowing down into the lower limbs, and not enough gets up to the brain to keep him functioning. Now, this is a period of amnesia. He remembers nothing about this when the experiment is over. And he'll swear up and down that he didn't uh, do that. He didn't do that. He was mm -hmm. still pu punching away. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me that the ear is very, very important in all of this, so let's <coughs> examine carefully this ear chamber, starting first with the outer lobe, and then passing into the canal, and here is where the ear membrane would be located. Let's just put it in here. On the other side of that ear membrane is the inner ear, and then passing down from the inner ear is the eustachian tube, which goes down into the back of the mouth. Well, Dr. Harold, we have here a mechanical contrivance uh, devised to simulate the effect of the eardrum. This is the uh, outer canal, which, uh, no, which you just pointed out. This communicates with outside atmospheric pressure. And uh, this is normal as long as we stay on the ground. Yes. Now, the uh, middle ear, which is a closed space except for this bleeding valve of the eustachian tube, uh, contains air and will, under the conditions of uh, a descent, say under the water 20 or 30 feet below the surface, or uh, from the pressure's coming in now. That's right. correct. From the, the outside. Pressure's increasing. Anyone can see that the tympanic membrane, or eardrum as we commonly call it, is depressed inward, com compressed very violently. Now, if the eustachian tube is operating as a safety valve, as it should be, this excursion of the eardrum is very modest and recovers perfectly all right. normally. Well, now, what is the other extreme, uh, the eardrum being pushed out from the inside? Well, Earl, if we... Uh, increase the pressure within the middle ear or conversely decrease the pressure on the outside of the ear the eardrum then tends to <clears throat> bulge outward as you can see here in this model but only if you hold the or stop off the eustachian tube again it's only if the eustachian tube does not uh, properly function if the eustachian tube properly functions it bleeds off the air let's see increased pressure out and everybody is comfortable. It seems to me the logical conclusion is that if you have a cold, you should never go up in an aircraft or go diving with diving equipment. That's correct, because a flyer, when his ears are not in good shape, will automatically be grounded by a conscientious flight surgeon. Well, that pretty well takes care of this problem of pressure. How about uh, such things as acceleration? Well, Earl, if you're going to use your ticket to the moon, you'll have to be able to travel a great deal faster than the uh, present day speed record, which is in excess of 1,600 miles per hour. Uh, in fact, a uh, speed of 25,000 miles per hour is necessary just to overcome the effects of gravity. Now, when you arrive at the other end of your journey on the moon, the uh, deceleration or braking action would be tremendous. Uh, out in space, say 10 miles from the surface of the Earth, uh, we really don't know the, what problems we will encounter at that altitude. Of course, some of these problems have been anticipated by knowing the way in which uh, certain things uh, affect the Earth, as, for example, cosmic rays. And so, from that, uh, rocket ships have been designed with double hulls, so that uh, the outer hull is, uh, is very thin and will stop uh, anything before it gets through to the vital inner hull. Now, what about such things as, uh, oh, gravity? Well, Earl, now you're talking about ten years into the future. There are a whale of a lot of, uh, there's a whale of a lot of research to be done, a great many problems yet to be solved. We have the uh, pressure and the oxygen problems of high altitude bailout solved. At Randolph Field, they are presently working on the problems of uh, whirling and frostbite. Now, what's happening here? Well, now here, uh, there's been an uh, explosive decompression because the uh, a blister blew out of one of